So you have a car, right? You've got some time maybe that you want to spend on a different side hustle. We've been talking a lot on this channel about diversifying your income streams. Well, you've actually got several options available to you, some of which you're probably already aware of and some of which you probably aren't. And in today's episode, what, what I want to do is take a look at seven different ways that you're able to make money with your vehicle. So stick around. Hey guys, welcome back to the VIP Financial Education Channel. It's your cash flow coach, Matthew Pillmore here. And today what I wanna do is look at seven different ways that we can turn your car into a cash flowing side hustle. Now, let's go ahead and dive right into the list. Number one, I think is the most obvious and the most expected, which is driving for a rideshare, specifically Uber, as the most widely known, recognized ride sharing platform in the entire world. Uber is certainly a way that you can make some extra cash on the side by accepting rides through the app. And the best time to drive might be either on the weekends or during commuting hours, but you can also drive during the day or the weeknights as well. And this is becoming more and more popular as people obviously always need a ride and they want to save money by using a service like Uber versus taking a taxi cab or even driving their own vehicle. Sometimes having your own car can even be more expensive for somebody than, than taking rideshare. So keep in mind that you're gonna need to be at least 21 years old, which applies to almost everybody here on our channel according to our analytics. You're gonna have to have a vehicle with four doors in order to drive for Uber. You cannot drive a two-door vehicle for obvious reasons. And before you can drive, you are gonna to need to pass a personal background check, as well as a vehicle safety inspection as well. The second is much like Uber, which is its greatest competitor, the one you're most familiar with, I'm sure, which is Lyft. And just like Uber, you can drive for Lyft as long as you are 21 years old and you can work as an independent contractor for them. Most drivers are actually going to utilize both Uber and Lyft in order to stay as busy as possible. And according to most of the drivers that I've ridden with, they all kind of have mixed feelings about each of those platforms. So you may find one appeals to you more than the other. When you're waiting to accept a ride, you can actually check both apps though, and you can choose the better option. You do also need four doors as your Lyft driver as well, but you do have the opportunity of earning a $500 cash bonus driving for Lyft, which I think is appealing. And you can also get that bonus by driving a certain number of, of times when you are, are first starting with Lyft. Now bear with me through this list, guys, because we're gonna do a wrap up on this and I'm gonna share with you which of the two of the seven I like the best in this episode. Certainly many of these are far more transactional ways of spending your time, which contradicts what my recommendations are typically gonna be. And that includes this third option here, which is driving for restaurants as a delivery driver. And this is a great alternative, of course, to driving people around. So if you're not a fan of actually having random strangers in your vehicle, driving for Uber or for Lyft or any other rideshare service that you find, you can do this instead. Certainly leaves a better smell in your car probably as well. More and more restaurants are actually partnering with food service delivery platforms like Uber Eats or what, what's known as DoorDash. And it actually creates a really wide variety of available food delivery that wasn't here previously. It's really a great idea for consumers and it saves the restaurants from actually having to hire a delivery staff and it gives somebody like you the opportunity to earn some extra cash if you need it as well. This is a really good option for people that are over 18 but under 21. So if you're younger, which again is a very, very small part of our demographic here on the channel, but if you happen to have a child that needs extra cash, this is a really good way to do this because you only have to be 18 versus 21 like the ride shares. You can also deliver food by foot, you can deliver food by bicycles or scooters. And so you can earn even if you don't have a car through those platforms, which I think is, is pretty nifty. Again, a great side hustle to earn extra cash for the short term while you're investing into more residual forms of income. But just like Uber and Lyft, you get to name the hours that you wanna work. So you get to kind of work on your own terms, which I think is really great. You don't have to work, you're not required at a, at a specific shift or anything like that. Depending on the day, you may actually deliver orders for one restaurant or multiple restaurant brands. So it's really a, a decent option for those that it's a fit for. Number four is similar to number three, which is that you can earn extra cash by using your car as a personal grocery shopper. It's just a little bit more personal. And what I mean by that is when you receive an order, you're actually gonna physically go out and buy the groceries from a store and you're gonna deliver them to the customer. And since you're physically picking up the groceries, you can earn more than you would by just delivering food from restaurants and where you're just going and picking up a, a pre-made order. But only if you know your way around the grocery store. You know, it's all gonna be about speed and timeliness within that option. The next choice here, the fifth, is that you're gonna be able to collect various scrap metals or junk that can be exchanged for money. And if you own a 
pickup truck or you can tow a trailer. You can also make money collecting scrap metal or you can haul off bulky items for customers who, who can't haul away their own discarded items. This was something that I actually relied on here recently when I donated a brand new couch to a gentleman that ran a nonprofit where he was collecting furniture for people that were in need. And so look, if you have a, a vehicle type that can haul goods, obviously you're gonna be valuable to a select demographic as well, including but not limited to even helping people move things in your spare time. And there's a lot of money that you can make on the side by doing that, by just simply posting an ad on Craigslist. But when you do pick up things like scrap metal, for example, you can find a local recycling center or scrap metal yard, and they'll pay you for that haul. Now, in tandem with this is offering that moving service. And, and example, you can haul furniture and appliances or pianos. One of my good friends is a piano restorer and he relies on this type of stuff all the time, just personal individuals who can help him move. You can move grills and you can move various landscaping items, material for instance, uh, things that don't fit into a car or an SUV. And the possibilities can be really endless and this is also useful if you happen to have a trailer as well. You can advertise services really inexpensively through Craigslist, you can advertise for free on Facebook and you can just simply obviously share word of mouth. There are always people that are in need of those types of services. Now number six and number seven are my favorite and, and they're the favorite for purposes of being more of a scalable high income cash flowing and even potentially residual business model. As you know, we're all about that passive, which we call progressive income here on the channel. Progressive meaning that there's some upfront work that's gonna need to be dedicated, and then over time it gets progressively less involved. I have not identified any income streams that don't require any work at all. So it's important to expect that you're gonna to need to dedicate your time and effort and attention and even sometimes money on any income stream that you're focused on getting. So for me, I'm looking at those that over time progressively get easier and easier to run and require less and less time and or money in order for that to happen. That starts me off with this option, which is advertising on your car. Now, if you don't mind using your car as a moving billboard, uh, I mean, you can make a lot of great money renting out that so-called auto real estate on the car. And there are several companies to choose from when you do this. Most popular company is, is called Carvertize. At Carvertize.com, you can actually learn about how you can earn money and the type of money you can make by just having your car wrapped. It's not a bad deal. However, you can also extend this into your own profession. And there have been times where we've, we've used our vehicles to wrap and monetize and advertise for our own business. There's a reason that Carvertize exists in the first place and it's because car wrapping works. It draws attention. Take a look at Meet Kevin's YouTube channel when you get a chance. I always get a lot of really good entertainment out of his channel. Very knowledgeable real estate professional in the marketplace. I have had a number of really good conversations with him. I like him a lot. Um, he's always really active and, and doing some entertaining things there on the channel as well. But he wrapped his own vehicle. And is a perfect example of how you can go out there and really get your own personal brand and name out there more by just simply turning your car into an investment, an investment that pays off. And we'll see whether or not you can pick which one is my favorite of these seven. But the seventh, before we turn this back on you and ask you what you think is my favorite of these is offering your vehicle as a rental business. And you can do this by using services like Turo. When you think of Turo, think Airbnb, think VRBO for vehicles. Now with Turo, you can actually earn between 30 up to even as much as $150 or more per day listing your vehicle as a rental car. So this is the revolutionary auto rental business. And it's pretty interesting. I'll admit there's a lot of intrigue. I've spent some time researching this and we're also looking at how we can incorporate this into the current property that we are renting, uh, that we're purchasing rather in the mountains. So we're gonna try and tie together multiple income streams from that purchase and certainly wanna kinda help you guys start thinking a little more creatively. So we're gonna walk you through that process. But the amount that you can earn is really gonna depend on the year, the make, the model of the vehicle. And it's gonna be obviously, of course, based on how desirable Turo is in your specific area. This is gonna work better in certain geographical areas than others. Per an example, on Turo's website, you can rent a Tesla, a Model S, and you can earn an extra $868 every single month just by renting out your car for seven days of the month. Think about that. Seven days of the month and you make 868? So you can see the cash flow potential. There's a video uh, on YouTube I watched not long ago and the gentleman made over $1,000 renting out 
his Audi, just running it three times. You gotta be sure to take a lot of photos of the vehicle. You're gonna wanna make sure that the condition is documented very, very closely before and after each time it's used. You're gonna have to make sure you're checking out as many videos ahead of time. Watch both the good and the bad experiences there on YouTube regarding Turo before you use this in your own practices. But there are people literally turning this into full-blown businesses, just like people are turning Airbnb into full-blown businesses. There are real estate investors that are going out and targeting only properties they plan to rent as Airbnb properties exclusively. And there are people that are buying vehicles that plan to do the exact same thing. Now, I am gonna be focusing more and more this year on the concept of lifestyle assets. Okay, so lifestyle assets are what I define as assets we can both rent and make money on, as well as use for ourselves, for our own personal enjoyment. And I think this is sort of the concept behind timeshares, when they're taking you into one of those two or three or four hour long timeshare meetings and selling you on the idea of purchasing a timeshare. Oftentimes, I think they're setting you up as, uh, you know, with this is going to pay for itself. And I think that's really the idea behind this, but I, I think it's more effective than timeshares. If you wanna know my opinion on timeshares, long and short of it is stay as far away as possible. Do not buy timeshares. However, something like this can actually function as a business, but we're gonna to have to really analyze what requires the least amount of work in order to make the most amount of money so that you guys can achieve the most amount of freedom possible. That's actually something that Will Smith talked about. Do as little as you can to make as much as you can so you can be as free as you can. And when we think about that, that pretty much excludes every option on this list outside of using your vehicle as a billboard. So if you were curious as to which one was my favorite, advertising with your vehicle would have to be that. Now you could, under extreme circumstances, convert me into number seven being my favorite, which is using a rental service like Turo to actually create and monetize somewhat of a rental business of your own. However, it's going to require a lot more organization and it's gonna to have to be run very much like a business. If you're doing it as a, uh, a solution of renting out your own vehicle, in my personal opinion, that requires far too much legwork from you. You're gonna to have to meet with the renter before, you're gonna to have to meet with the renter after, there are gonna be inspections before and after, and of course, when there are complications because accidents happen, you're gonna to have to deal with that as well. And this is no different truly than Airbnb, which you have to think about ahead of time as well. How much is your time worth? If you're making 500 or 1,000 or $1,500 a month in leftover net cash flow, but it requires from you 10, 15, 20 hours of your time throughout the month, would that be considered worth it for you? Now, if you're currently earning an average of say $50 an hour, which converts into roughly $100,000 per year, 96,000 I believe, uh, if you're working 40 hours per week, well, maybe it does make sense to spend 20 hours of your time throughout the month in order to generate $2,000 worth of net cash flow because you're increasing from $50 an hour average up to an average of $100 per hour. So I could see that being worth it. If you're currently making $500,000 a year, you're making a million dollars a year. For somebody like me, it wouldn't make any sense to spend 20 hours of my life every single month to try and generate an extra 2,000 or even 3,000 or even $4,000 per month. I'm much better off focusing on where I'm making more money than that. So it's all about, about figuring out the time value of money. Make sure you check out the video that we did on time value of money to see exactly in greater detail how that should be considered as you're focusing on doing the most you can for the most possible, okay? Now, beyond these side hustles, um, it's, it's gonna be important to do a lot of additional things in order to maximize your cash flow and, and in order to minimize your risk. So tracking mileage, of course, on your vehicle is gonna be very important. Make sure you, you talk to a tax professional when you're doing this so that you are following the rules of the IRS. And, and if you're driving people around for Uber or Lyft, and you're doing something along the lines of renting your car out on Toro, then you're definitely gonna to need to get specific types of auto insurance that protect you. Your car insurance provider is most likely gonna offer these types of things as an add-on. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have it added before you start doing this. And staying current on your vehicle maintenance is also gonna be critical. Uh, you don't wanna destroy your car with the extra miles that you're gonna be putting on it. And you especially don't wanna be putting anybody else at risk. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're changing the oil according to the manual. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're maintaining the proper 
proper air pressure in your tires, of course. You're gonna wanna make sure you're monitoring your brake pads, replacing rotors, uh, obviously replacing your engine air filter when necessary. These are the most basic things to keep in mind. So I don't think I'm telling you anything that you wouldn't already assume, but you just can't stop there. It's gonna be all about keeping your car in great condition, especially if you're doing something like renting it out on Turo. In order to maintain great reviews, you wouldn't wanna show up to an Airbnb and find the place messy. You wouldn't wanna find it unclean, so un something being unsanitary is just the very starting point. Beyond that, there could be damages, there could be issues that cause bad reviews. And if you start getting bad reviews on things like Turo or Airbnb, that can be literally a deal killer moving forward. You can truly lose your traction and be unable to actually make the profits necessary to make it worth your time. So you're gonna really have to be more hands-on for those types of options, whether you're driving for delivery purposes, humans or food, or whether you're renting the vehicle out. Anytime you're using your car actively to make money, you're gonna have to take those things into consideration. Again, it may surprise you that the advertisement option in wrapping your vehicle is the one that I like the best, but the reason I do is because you're already planning to use the vehicle for normal day-to-day -day operation, picking up groceries, commuting to work, personal use, and the car is just serving you you're already doing it anyway, so that is by far the most passive of the bunch. But you can turn your car from being solely a liability here to a money-making type of asset for you. And I, I do think that automobiles are widely considered one of the greatest liabilities of all time. And so being able to actually offset that to some extent is, is really attractive. I do want you guys to check out lifetime cost of owning a vehicle first, okay? Because I think that that's gonna make a big difference here in some of your decision-making. I'm gonna go ahead and link that in the description below, so make sure you check that out as well. In that video, we actually look at the costs that come with owning a car and I think they far exceed what most people are expecting. Uh, most of us aren't necessarily aggregating the total of everything involved with car ownership when we think about what our cars are costing us, but it's just part of that ongoing leak and it's almost like death by a thousand cuts, if you will. People often are making so much money these days where they're you know, making over $10,000 a month in, in their household uh, and yet they have very little to show for it. Some people struggle to even meet that minimum of a $500 starting point in order to benefit from our coaching while still making a ton of money. And you look at the big picture and you wonder, where is all of my money going? Well, I think automobiles is one of the biggest areas that money is leaking out. So we do want your vehicles to produce for you if possible. So taking a really close look at how this list might serve you will be important so that you can actually continue to cash flow as well as possible throughout each and every month. Now, have you guys utilized any of these side hustles? Would be super curious to hear from you as always in the comments section below. Please go ahead and let us know which ones of those have you experimented with? Which ones worked well? What were some of the downsides that you found by the end? I, I'm, I'm very curious to know the good and the bad here. So go ahead and drop a comment. Please know that for every single comment that we get from you, you are automatically entered into our $50 Amazon card contest each and every week. Now I give away two $25 Amazon gift cards now every single week, okay? So there are going to be three potential winners. I not only say three, and I, but I also say potential because it's going to be the first of the three that claims the prize who will get it. So every time I'm gonna name out three winners and the first person to get back to us using the email address provided is going to be the one that claims the prize. And what this is going to do is require you guys to get to these videos quickly. The second you see one of the videos drop by being a subscriber and having your post notifications on, when that notification comes through, you click the video, you watch it to the end, and we're gonna announce a winner twice per week, $25 every week, starting off this brand new year. So we wanna give you guys the best opportunity to cash flow and just have some fun. I mean, look, if you win a $25 gift card, go out and use that card for something you wouldn't have already bought. Take it and spoil yourself. I like rewarding you for doing the right thing, which is why we're also gonna be coming out with a brand new award process this year. Now, we're gonna be announcing that here in the next handful of weeks where we're gonna actually be providing you guys uh, celebratory reason to, you know, to take action. And I think that being able to celebrate is great. We, we, we earned two amazing awards last year and it felt amazing. And so I want you guys to have and share in that feeling, whether it be because your credit was increased or whether it be because debts were being paid off or whether it was because you did a great job in coaching and cash flow was maximized. There's gonna be some milestones that you guys 
are going to be able to celebrate and we're going to be there celebrating along next to you so it's going to be a lot of fun this year make sure you're a subscriber there's got to be a d next to that letter E on the subscribe in order to make sure that you're eligible for the contest. Make sure you're dropping a like on the videos. And guys, throw a thumbs up on this. If you want us to do a more in-depth review of a website, say like Toro, uh, maybe I'll even throw the Jeep up as a rental vehicle and see how it goes. We'll see. If you get enough likes on this video, let's say that we hit at least 500 likes on this video, we'll throw the Jeep on Toro and see how it goes. All right, guys, that's our challenge, 500 likes. Until we see you on the next video, make it a great day today and take care.